So at this point, I think it's fair to assume that you may be asking yourselves, where do the entries of this matrix P come from? So the following theorem is going to demonstrate that these entries actually come from the eigenvectors of matrix A. So here's our theorem. We want to let A be an n by n matrix. Then matrix A is diagonalizable if and only if matrix A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. Now, more precisely, we can say that there exists an n by n invertible matrix P and a diagonal matrix D such that the inverse of P times A times P equals matrix D if and only if the columns of matrix P are n linearly independent eigenvectors of A and the diagonal entries of matrix D are the eigenvalues of A corresponding to these eigenvectors in P in the same order. So we need to go ahead now and verify that this theorem holds true. So here's our proof. We want to let A be an n by n matrix, and we want to let D be a diagonal matrix. Now, because we have an if and only if statement, we're going to need to use proof by cases. So case one, if matrix A is diagonalizable, then matrix A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So to begin, let's suppose that matrix A is diagonalizable, or in other words, matrix A is similar to matrix D. Then we know by the definition of similarity that there exists an n by n invertible matrix P such that the inverse of matrix P times matrix A times matrix P equals the diagonal matrix D, which is equivalent to saying that matrix A times matrix P is equal to matrix P times matrix D. So let's let the columns of matrix P be defined as vector P sub 1, vector P sub 2, all the way up to vector P sub n. And we'll also go ahead and let the diagonal entries of matrix D be lambda sub 1 all the way up to lambda sub n. So our goal is to now show that this implies matrix A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So using the fact that matrix A times matrix P is equal to matrix P times matrix D, and then using a little matrix vector multiplication, we can then equate the columns and see that we end up with n eigenvalue problems by definition of an eigenvector, which confirms that vector P sub 1 through P sub n are the eigenvectors of matrix A corresponding to the diagonal entries of matrix D. And by the invertible matrix theorem, since P is invertible, the vectors P sub 1 through P sub n are linearly independent, which is exactly what we were looking for. Woohoo! So we can officially conclude that matrix A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, which completes the proof of case 1. In case 2, we want to show that if matrix A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, then matrix A is diagonalizable. So here we're going to let A have n linearly independent eigenvectors with corresponding eigenvalues, respectively. So we have n eigenvalue problems. And from case one, we know that this implies the following. So our goal here is to show that this is going to imply that matrix A is diagonalizable. So let's go ahead and let matrix P be the matrix with column vectors P sub 1 through vector P sub n then the above equation can be rewritten as matrix A times matrix P is equal to matrix P times matrix D. Now, since the columns of matrix P are linearly independent, then matrix P is invertible by the invertible matrix theorem. Then taking this equation A times matrix P equals P times matrix D, 
and left hand multiplying by the inverse of matrix P, we see that this equivalently becomes the inverse of P times A times P equals matrix D, which means that matrix A is similar to matrix D. Woohoo! So we can officially conclude that therefore, since matrix A is similar to matrix D, matrix A is diagonalizable, which completes the proof of case two.